We kick off this week's training video with kickoffs. These are all three from the same game. I'm going to show you these in chronological order and how we miss something really small early in the game and we don't preventive officiate and then we end up with some big misses on big fouls that we really should have gotten and we don't. We'll break these plays down plus a whole lot more. It's next in this week's training video. Welcome to this year's edition of the NFHS football video training series. We're studying the National Federation of High School Football Rules and Five Man Mechanics. This is our video training class collection sponsored by the Arkansas Association of High School Officials the AAHSO, helping good officials get better. Our technical advisor for the rules is George Demetrio. Greg Downham is our line of scrimmage technical advisor. Senior technical advisor is Dax Hill. This video is produced by Matt Bivens. Executive producer is Walt Coleman. I'm your host, Todd Allen. One of the most powerful tools you have as a football official is preventive officiating. Because you've heard the adage, an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure. Great officials aren't the ones that get 35 fouls in a game. Great officials are the guys that go through and hardly no one knows they're even there. Guys that on the football field, players relate to. And on the sideline, coaches listen to and are engaged with. They know how to tell coaches, you need to talk to this guy. You need to take care of this. And coaches don't feel like they're being attacked or they're feeling like the official thinks he's above the game. They just think this guy is really trying to make the game run smoothly. And so they listen to him and they help. Let's take a look at these three kickoff plays now, and we see an opportunity early where we don't preventive officiate, and then we see fouls later in the game. We're gonna see red kick off a lot in these three plays. That's because the game is a blowout. This first kick that I wanna look at happens with 5.30 left in the second quarter, and it's a 14 to nothing game. And what I wanna show you is just some coverage areas. And I just wanna talk about who's looking at who and we're in zone coverage at this point. So the headlinesman has these players in this area. The referee is working this area, kind of in a dual coverage area because the referee's gonna have the ball carrier. The back judge is covering this area. The line judge has this area. The umpire has the, kind of the middle of the, of the field. So this is kind of just the area where the coverage is and kind of shows you on, on a map where you should be looking. And now let's follow this play and watch these players right here. And these players kind of leave the area where the line judge was officiating. You have to stay with these players all the way across the field. And look at the line judge's head here. He's already gone in his dead ball mechanics, but we've got number two who is accelerating across the field. Everyone else is slowing down and this player is speeding up. It should be a huge red flag. This ought to jump out at you as being trouble keep your eye on this guy and this is not an aggressively hard or even a foul but what this is is just showing you that the game's getting chippy and if I'm the line judge in this play what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprint across the field and catch number two and then I'm going to get on the radio and I'm going to tell the head linesman hey I just talked to number two and as far as I get with this, I might have this conversation face to face because we've got a little interval here where we're going to get the ball ready for play. And I want to, I'm going to tell him, you've got to go to the head coach and you've got to tell him that number two is being a knucklehead and say, hey, when the play was over, he bumps this guy, didn't rise to the level of a foul, but it's going to. So I need the coach to step in here and talk to number two for us and calm down this special teams. But we don't do that. You can tell here, we don't even see it. At least there's no evidence that we see it. And like I said, again, this is not a foul, but it is something we need to jump on and preventive officiating. Red hot item we should take care of. Because now let's watch this next kickoff. Starting the second half down a 21 to nothing game. And the first thing that I wanna talk about in this play is this runner, this ball carrier is not out of bounds when the defense is fully committed to that tackle. Spins him around, they go to the ground. Nothing illegal about this. This is a perfectly legal play from the defensive standpoint. But you see this block in the back, which is, it's not a block in the back because it's late. It's just a late hit. This is a peel off play around the, around the ball carrier getting tackled and this is, what makes it look particularly nasty is the fact that it is in the back, but there is no place for this at all. This is a 15 yard unsportsmanlike act. I like to hang unsportsmanlike acts on players like this, although it doesn't technically meet the definition, but it does hang that number on them. If this guy gives you more trouble in the game with another silly play like this, you can just uh, DQ him. 
with two unsportsmanlike acts. So that's the way I handle these types of plays, and that's the way I would recommend that you handle these types of plays. I don't want to get in an argument about the rule. This is a game management issue, but the problem with this play is we just don't see it. And it's right where the ball is getting tackled. Line judge has a great shot at it. Referee, who doesn't really hustle following the ball carrier. I would like to see more movement out of the referee. As the ball carrier starts up the field, I'd like to see you hustling, trailing the ball carrier. Head linesman could save the crew with this. It's all the way across the field. And I know you have those old school guys that say don't fish in somebody else's pond and there's a lot of truth to that but the reality is you've got the best look at this if the line judge misses it also the back judge these flags can come all the way across the field and they're crew savers and anytime you can save your crew with a correct dead ball foul behind the runner you are doing a great job and a service for your crew because this is a foul and we need to get it. Next one, we're going to get off these kick plays. 35 to nothing late in the fourth quarter. You can see we've had a lot of kickoffs from the red team. And this one I can tell you really simply is, look at this action right here. This is just the line judge way too deep. You've got to keep these plays boxed in. Remember, we're talking about five officials, 22 guys spread out all over the field. You have to keep the play boxed in. And if you do that, you got a better chance of seeing this. This is another, just a, just a nasty block in the back and coming from chase mode clearly a block in the back that we miss and again guys these are the plays that we've got to get i've got a bunch of plays to show you we'll start with this one here's your focal point here this defensive player against this slot receiver who just runs a inside route here and we get a flag by the back judge and run it back here and show it to you one more time you see he just spins the defender but the ball is in the air the report that we got was this was called defensive holding and there was some questions about whether we let some offensive play go that should have been called holding but this is actually two fouls uh, if it's defensive holding it's just barely defensive holding this is pass interference and this is a grab and restrict he actually spins the wide receiver as the ball is in the air and the defender's clearly not playing the ball this is an easy foul correctly officiated here by the bag judge as a foul but think about what category we're going to put this in in the defensive pa pass interference categories watch this bunch formation at the top of the screen a little pass comes out here just beyond the line of scrimmage and that wide out just grabs and spins the defender around that is offensive holding we do not call this who i think has a good look at this the line judge the head linesman should have a good look at this the ball comes out here no need to watch the ball carrier should immediately get out in front of these blocks this is late enough to back judge should be on this referee could be on this another good play though to talk about the offside official the line judge how you could easily turn and pick up the quarterback as the referee spins to work out ahead of the ball carrier and we've got three good shots where we could have picked up offensive holding here and we do not but this is a foul well, here's an interesting play to look at, and we've got two looks at it. This is a wide shot, and then we've got an end zone shot that really tells you. I mean, this ball goes over the quarterback's head and is picked up by the running back near the two-yard line, and he goes back near the goal line, gets hit and driven into the end zone. Now, the momentum rule does not apply here because he is not recovering his opponent's fumble, nor is he fielding a punt or a kick of any kind. So the minimum rule doesn't apply here, but if we look at this end zone shot, we can really see where he gains possession of the ball at the two, and then he gets hit about the half yard line. And this is a great spot by the referee. Although I do want to caution you, I don't mind the pointing, but you cannot stare at the spot you're pointing at. You've got to keep your head up. You know that we're going to put this ball on the two yard line. You got to have your head on a swivel and be a great dead ball official. That spot's not going anywhere. No reason for you to stare at it. a lot of players here and a potential for something to happen that you wouldn't know about if you're caught staring at the ground like this but this is a great spot and i believe this is correctly officiated this ball is down at the half yard line just an end zone shot here let's talk about keys for the referee either this tackle or this tackle 
um, umpires working guard, center guard. So we'll have this play run, and we'll see that the referee's going to throw a flag. And for an offensive hold, knowing those are his two keys, let's go back and look at those plays over and just see what action we see from the two tackle positions. I want to say this is the near side tackle that he's making this call on. Near side to him, that is. And you can see there is a grab on both tackles. They do grab the defenders, but neither player materially restricts the defender. And that's the important part of offensive or defensive holding. Poor technique, feet or beat should all clue you in. You should be looking at that type of action. And the referee is looking exactly where we want him to look. But what he misses is here is we don't see a material restriction. The defenders just run in, sack the quarterback, should have left this flag in your pocket. If you call that offensive holding, you'll call offensive holding on every play. Remember, we're trying to be consistent in what we do. Look for the technique, grabs on the outside, look for the feet to be beat, and then look for that material restriction like we saw earlier on the play where we had a no call. The look at a potential DPI play, and uh, I want to know why the back judge with the ball at the nine yard line is not on the in line where he can officiate this line completely. The action we're going to see is on this receiver, which belongs to the head linesman at the snap. But watch as this play develops. The back judge closes his back to that side of the field by moving and does not see this action as the defender actually is out of position. The Receiver gets inside position, defender on the outside plays through the back and literally spins the receiver before the ball arrives. And this is not a bang-bang play. This is also defensive pass interference. Although trying to make a play for the ball, he does play through the receiver and actually spins him around. So this is a no call for the headlinesman. I think the back judge in a better position on the inline and standing still opened up with his body completely to the field, never turning and getting an angle away from the action. I think he picks this up too, as we are clearly into zone mechanics when this play happens or when this foul happens. So another miss here for defensive pass interference. Real quickly, I wanna end this week with a little conversation I had with a coach today, as a matter of fact. And the question was, the head coach wanted to talk with the referee. And the official on the sideline said, well, if you wanna to talk to the referee, you have to call a timeout. And that's not true. And I, of course, I don't know what exactly was said, but it's a good point, a good teaching opportunity because what we wanna tell that head coach is, as soon as I get an opportunity, I'll get the referee over here to talk with you. Because the coach should be able to take 30, 35, 40 seconds even during a change of possession or after a score and have a brief conversation with the referee without calling a, a timeout. The other interesting thing about this is, why are we wanting to talk to the referee? The head coach should be able to get just as much or more information from a sideline official about anything that happened except roughing the kicker, running into the kicker, or roughing the passer. All the other information is going to come from somewhere else on the field. So that sideline official should be on the radio getting information to answer the coach's question. And then as soon as it's practical to get that information to the coach, we give it to him. Because communication is the key. This is what we talk about again and again. Game management. Understanding how to manage the game. It's so important. So I appreciate you guys. Everything you're doing. Uh, we're working hard here now. Approaching the midway point of the season. So questions or comments. Things you'd like to share. Here's my email address. ToddAllen65 at gmail.com I love to hear from you. And hear how you're doing. And how these videos are impacting what you're doing on the field. For the Arkansas Association of High School Officials, this is Todd Allen saying I hope to see you on the field real soon.